Okay then, so as a continuation from our overview of nodes, let's add our first node. Now, before when you run away and thinking, oh my gosh, this is really simple. What are you doing? This is really easy stuff. There is a reason for explaining this in a more progressive way, because what I'm going to do is gradually introduce you to how these kind of nodes interconnect together, how you can kind of pull data in from one node and move them to another, just to kind of set the scene a little bit more if this is something you are learning for the first time. Now, of course, it's going to progressively work forward to more complex examples. So just bear with me, but let's talk a little bit about their nodes. So this is where we were from the previous video. I'm just going to hit the plus. Let's add a brand new node. now. I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom here and I'm going to use one of the build chips pre-built kind of nodes for us here and that is just the calculator node so just hit that and then the calculator node will now be added now let's talk a little bit more about the characteristics of a node specifically before we start adding in the functionality for this particular node OK, so the calculator node is all being added. You can see we've got some descriptions on the right hand side of this specific node. Of course, as we said before, we can edit that if we would like. Um, we can now double click on this here. We can actually just change this as a title. So that's quite useful. Now, the great thing about the naming of these particular nodes and something you need to get into the habit of doing is make sure you are very descriptive with your particular nodes, because what will happen is, is as you add more nodes to your workflows, then what you'll do is you'll be actually referencing nodes from a previous or a different location within inside the actual workflow itself so adding in calculator 2 plus 2 is really not going to help us so I could just here just change this maybe to input a calculator or something like that if I can spell calculator like that and of course I've now got something a little bit more descriptive in terms of this what this particular node is doing now of course we can uh, sort of collapse this and expand this um, we can also look at the code that is kind of generated behind this scene so of course remember there's nothing to stop you at all from kind of going in here and modifying the code if it's something you are very comfortable to do but as I said previously nodes really are just kind of like uh, kind of units of code which are executed through the particular workflow so let me just cancel that and come out of that we'll cover that a little bit more later in terms of customizing nodes in terms of from a code perspective so you can see here that this particular node has a number of inputs so we've got a first number and then we've got a second number and then we kind of got this preset list of kind of options that are available to us now different nodes will have different types of examples like this so this one is very very specific to calculating two numbers together so you would technically just put two plus uh, if I just move that there two plus two and then of course you would say uh, sort of like maybe add two or something like that which will give you four um, and of course you can then if you wanted to test this specific node you can hit on the little play button here and then you can then run the node now what will happen is it will quickly go away and it will show you the hopefully the result of that and hopefully if I've got my calculation right it's four okay so there's the answer we got four come back that is a correct calculation so as you can see here we're hard coding in the first number and the second number now it's likely in this sort of scenario you would want to pass in some values into the REST API call and we can then pass those values into the first number and the second number so we're going to do that very very shortly so that's pretty straightforward of course now once we've made and we've got that kind of calculation completed how do we then return that back to the user well quite simply with inside build chip you add in an additional node to be able to do that so we'll hit the plus here and we can look down into this flow node section here these are kind of really common nodes for us here it's the return node that we're interested in so what this will do is this will allow us to set the value that we would like to return back to the API as a result okay so we've got the request coming in and we want to then send that result back so how do we do that well quite simply we could go just here on the value and we could go to the variables here now I'll touch on this more in the, uh, in later videos here but you can see here that we've got this input calculator so this is the name of the node that is just up here so it's going to be always important to always rename your nodes which I said was uh, is an important thing now we can press on this little arrow here and we can see that the input calculator calculator can return back some additional values to us it could return back an error or a build or anything like that but we want to return back
back the actual object itself. So if we just choose input calculator and that's all that we need to do. Now what will happen now is that um, we can play this particular workflow out. We can let the calculation happen and of course we can then see the results. So let's now quickly test this node. So if I just go up here and hit test and I'm just going to hit test workflow. I'm not going to pass any values in at this particular stage. Hit test workflow and then fingers crossed we'll see, should see the value of 4 come out which we do. That is our result coming back which is great. So of course I could just change values here and I'd get then a, a different result there. So that's a very very static kind of workflow. It's, everything is obviously all hard coded. Let's quickly then move on to the next video where we'll start looking at how do we then set up the REST API call trigger to accept values to come in which we can then pass through our workflow and then of course we can then return that result back.